Hi students, welcome to my channel. This is the third video of my electromagnetic induction chapter. Today's class, we can discuss about definition of electromagnetic induction. Definition of electromagnetic induction. Then we can look into Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction. Faraday's laws of here Faraday laws. Electromagnetic induction and later we can discuss about this class. We can go for the these three concepts. See, so, at last class already I explained about three experiments. One will be coil magnet experiment, another will be coil coil experiment, and third one will be coil coil by varying current experiment. Based on that experiment, Michael Faraday is going to give a statement that one we are going to call as Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction. Actually, he gave two laws. First one we are going to, first law we are going to call as deflation of electromagnetic induction, and second one we are going to call as second law we are going to call as Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Now, first we can come to the deflation of electromagnetic induction or Faraday's first law. Simple one. See here. I am going to take a simple experiment. What? That is the coil magnet experiment. I am going to take coil magnet experiment. I am going to take coil. See here, we are going to take a bar magnet. He is taking, going to take north pole, another the south pole. Here, what will happen? This one coil is going to connect to a galvanometer. No, last experiment. Here, he is going to take a magnet. When the magnet is going to move towards the coil. Galvanometer. What's the connected to the galvanometer? Coil. Galvanometer connected to the coil. It shows one side reflection. When the magnet moves away from the coil, the galvanometer is going to show the opposite deflection. Here, the galvanometer is showing the deflection because of what? Current is going to be induced. The way the current is going to be induced means what the field lines are present here, or what the magnetic field lines are going to be present here. That field lines are going to be passed through the coil. Yes, now the field lines are going to be passed through the coil. When the field lines are going to be passed through the coil, are going to be cut. Okay, they are going to be cut by the coil. When they are going to be cut by the coil, the flux is going to be changes. When the flux changes, the galvanometer shows the deflection means the current is going to be induced. That's why the definition of electromagnetic induction says that the phenomenon of the phenomenon of Phenomenon of generation of electric current. The phenomenon of generation of electric current. The phenomenon of generation of electric current. Electric current. In a coil, electric current in a coil or closed circuit or closed circuit, closed circuit due to changing magnetic flux, due to changing magnetic flux linked with the coil. Due to changing magnetic flux linked with a coil. This one we are going to call it as what? Deflation of electromagnetic induction or Faraday's first law. Simple one. When the magnet moves towards the coil, what the field lines are going to are there? The field lines are going to be cut by the coil. This coil, the field lines are going to be cut. When the field lines are going to be cut, means already we know. The flux is going to be changes. The change in flux induces the EMF or electric current. Same way, the phenomenon of generation of electric current in a coil or closed circuit. Coil or closed circuit due to change in flux. Yes, right. Due to change in flux linked with the coil. This one we are going to call as definition of electromagnetic induction or Faraday's first law of electromagnetic induction. Then come to the second one. This one we are going to call it as second law of electromagnetic induction or Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. This one first we can write the statement, then we can go for the explanation. 
the parallel stars of electromagnetic induction is there that the magnitude of the induced emf the magnitude of the magnitude of the induced emf magnitude of the induced emf in a coil or closed circuit coil or closed circuit is equal to the is equal to the negative rate of change of negative rate of change of negative rate of change of magnetic flux negative rate of change of magnetic flux linked with the current negative rate of change of magnetic flux linked with the current okay clear yes sir the magnitude of the induced emf in a coil is yes, not the magnitude of the induced emf in a coil is equal to the negative rate of change of magnetic flux linked with the coil see here already here the first what the observation observed by the circuit move towards the coil what the galvanometer connected one side deflection away from the coil opposite deflection when the magnet moves fast yes sir when the magnet will move faster inside the coil when the magnet move faster inside the coil the galvanometer is going to show the more deflection previously towards one side deflection is showing now when you going to move faster what will happen the galvanometer shows more deflection when the galvanometer shows more deflection means the induced current will be more as yes, the induced current will be more means the emf is also more that's why it is going to say that the magnitude of the induced emf is yes, the magnitude of the induced emf is equal to negative rate of change of magnetic flux negative sign i will explain later in let's i will explain why it will be negative sign now you can remember magnitude of the induced emf is equal to rate of change of magnetic flux here we are going to move faster when the magnet is going to move faster what will happen the field lengths are going to be cut by the coil in a short interval of time yes or no when you are going to move faster the field lengths are going to be cut by the coil in a short interval of time the flux change will be what will happen the flux change will be in a small time interval what will happen the galvanometer is going to show the deflection that's why we are going to say the magnitude of the induced emf is equal to the rate of change of magnetic flux linked with the coil that one we can write in mathematical equation the induced emf we are going to write e yes the induced emf we are going to write e that is equal to the induced emf e is equal to the negative rate yes the negative rate of change of magnetic flux change in flux means i am going to write d by rate of change i am going to write e means d by by
what we are going to call as Faraday's laws or Faraday's laws of electromagnetic field. Simple, the magnitude of the induced EMF in a current is equal to the negative rate of change of magnetic flux input with the current. This negative sign indicates that according to Lenz's law, the induced current opposes the change in flux. Here, the rate of change of magnetic flux y is here, when you are going to move the magnet faster inside the coil, what are the field lines are there? They are going to be cut by the coil in a short interval of time. When they are going to cut by the coil in a short interval of time, the flux change is also occur in a short interval. That time the thermometer shows the more deflection. More deflection means the induced current is also more. The induced current will be more means the EMF is also more. That's why you are going to say the magnitude of the induced EMF in a coil is equal to the rate of change of magnet. Magnetic flux linked with the coil. Okay. In in your reasoning questions, the last one question, simple question. In a electrical circuit, yes, in a electrical circuit, when the circuit is going to be switched on, or current is going to be switched on, why the sparking will occur? Yes, sir, why the sparking will occur? The last reasoning question. Why the sparking will occur means when you are going to switch off the circuit or switch off the current, what will happen? The current will be break down suddenly. No? Yes, the current is going to be break down suddenly. When the current breaks down suddenly, what will happen? The large flux is going to be induced with the large flux change. Yes, no? Sorry. When the current is going to be break suddenly, what will happen? The current is going to be break suddenly, what will happen? The flux change will be more. Yes, the flux change will be more. When the flux change will be more, the more EMF is going to be induced. When the more EMF is going to be induced, what will happen? The parking will be occur across the gaps of a circuit. This is the reason for why electric sparking will occur when the electrical circuit is switched off. Because there will be a sudden breakdown in the current. When the break sudden breakdown in the current induces what? Uh, sudden breakdown induces the large change in flux. When large change in flux means the EMF induces also more. EMF induces be more. What will happen? The gaps, the, uh, there will be gaps in the circuit. What will happen? The sparking will occur. This is what Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction. We keep in mind formula E is equal to minus P by T. If a coil are in magnetics, we can write E is equal to minus N into D pi by T. Now, we can look into the next one, Lenz's law. Lens law. We can say Lenz's law. In ray optics chapter, we are going to discuss the same one, that is Lenz's law. Here we can say Lenz's law. Lenz's law. See here. Lenz's law, we are going to use the Lenz's law means it is used to find the polarity of the induced EMF. Keep in mind, the last, which law gives the polarity of the induced EMF means that one we have to say Lenz's law, Lenz's law. Polarity of the induced EMF, Lenz's law used to find the polarity of the induced EMF. In one more question, it will be important. Which law gives the polarity of the induced EMF mystery is what? Lenz's law. Okay, here already I told, here the induced sign indicates that induced current opposes the change in flux according to Lenz's law. I will explain here. Before that, first we can write the statement, statement of Lenz's law. The polarity of the induced EMF, the polarity of the induced EMF the polarity of the induced EMF is such that polarity of the induced EMF is such that the polarity of the induced EMF is such that it tends to oppose it tends to oppose say Polarity of the induced EMF, it tends to produce a set. We can write instead of opposes, we can write it tends to produce a electrical current. Produces a electrical current. 
produces a electrical current produces a electrical current which opposes which opposes which opposes which opposes the change in flux opposes the change in flux change in flux linked with a current change in flux linked with a current this is what lenz's law the lenz's law is used to find the polarity of the induced emf the statement will be simple the polarity of the induced emf is such that it tends to produce a electrical current this is subject is tend to produce a electrical current which opposes the change in magnetic flux linked with the current this is which opposes the change in flux linked with the current simple thing see here here i have to explain the lenz's law is same one i am going to take a one coil Yeah. 
against the field. Yes, sir, against the field. Against the field means we have to, this is going to become what? North pole. Because what? North and north will ripple with each other. When north is going to become, this is the applied field, this is the induced field. The both are going to act in opposite direction. When both are going to be opposite direction, what will happen? The flux is going to be changes. When the flux is going to be changes, the EMF is going to be induced. Same way, here we can find the direction of the induced EMF or induced current. Yes, the direction of the induced current. It will be simple. We can apply the right hand clock rule. What will happen? Thumb gives what? Direction of the induced magnetic field. Yes, sir. We can give this is the direction of the induced current. This is curl finger gives what? Direction of the induced current. This gives what? Direction of the magnetic field. The curl finger gives the direction of the current. Means this is the direction of the magnetic field. Means the current will be what? Anti-clockwise direction. Yes, sir. The current will be what? Anti-clockwise direction. Simple thing, no? Yes, sir. This is the change in flux. This is going to become north pole. May I say that north means what? We are going to write again like this. Means the current will be what direction? Anti-clockwise direction. That's why we are going to say lens law will give the polarity of the induced. When you are going to move the magnet towards the coil, north pole, we are going to move towards the coil. The face of the coil towards the magnet is going to become dark. When it is going to become dark, the induced field opposes the applied field. When both are going to be opposed, what will happen? The flux is going to be changes. When the flux changes, the current is going to be flows to a coil in anti clockwise direction. Same way, when I am going to take a coil, when I am going to take a coil, this is not and this will be so when I am going to move magnet away from the coil yes, when I am going to move the magnet away from the coil here what will happen here north pole this is now this is going to become what south pole because north and south what will happen attract with each other but we are going to turn one against the field here north and south will attract with each other but we are moving against the attraction, again test the attraction when you are going to do what will happen here also. The applied field and induced field opposing direction. Yes, sir. Applied field and induced field will be in the opposite direction. When they are going to be opposite direction, what will happen? The flux is going to be changes. When flux is going to be changes, here the current is going to be forcing clockwise direction. See, yes means what? Clockwise direction. The current is going to be forcing clockwise direction. Here, north pole we are going to move towards the coil. What will happen? Anti clockwise direction. When the north pole towards the coil only we are going to move away from the coil, what will happen? Current is going to be forcing anti clockwise direction. Same way, when I are going to take coil, I am going to take a magnet. This will be south pole and this will be north pole. Now, when I am going to move the South pole towards the coil. Yes, sir, I am going to move the south pole towards the coil. Again, it will be the same thing. Here I am moving south pole. Here it will be face of the coil is going to become south. Because south and south what will happen? Ripple with each other. Light poles will ripple with each other. When the sign low, light poles will ripple with each other. Again, the flux will be changes. When the flux is going to be changes, the current is going to be induces in which direction? Again, it will be clockwise direction. Yes, sir. And so pole move towards the coil. Same way, I am going to take coil. I am going to take a bar magnet. This will be south and this will be north. When I am going to move the magnet away from the coil. This will be going to move the coil away from the magnet. What will happen when I am going to move away from the coil? This will be south. We have to turn a work against the field. What will happen? This is going to become what? North. North and south, what will happen? Attract with each other. But we are going to turn a work against the field. Yes, sir. We are moving away against the field. The face of the coil is going to become what? North. Means the current is going to be forcing anti clockwise direction. That's why we are going to say the polarity of the induced EMF is going to be given by what? Lens law. Lenses law. Here the negative sign indicates that the induced current opposes the change in flux. Yes, the induced current opposes the change in flux. Simple one. What the applied field is there? Induced field and applied field both are going to be opposite direction. When both will be in the opposite direction, what will happen? Flux is going to be changes. When the flux is going to be changes, current is going to be induces and direction of the current is also given.
with the field lens. It means the polarity of the induced EMF is such that it tends to produce a set electrical current which opposes the change in flux linked with the current. This is what lenses do. Same one. Keep in mind, when the dark pole moves towards the coil, what will happen? The face of the coil is also going to become dark. Current is going to flow in anti-clockwise direction. When the dark pole of the magnet is moved to away from the coil, what will happen? The face of the coil is going to become so. The current is going to flow in clockwise direction. When the south pole is going to move towards the coil, the face of the coil is going to become so, and current is going to be flow in clockwise direction. When the south pole is going to move away from the coil, what will happen? The face of the coil is going to become dark, and current is going to be flow in anti-clockwise direction. This is what lens. See here, this is about what lens law and polarity of the induced EMF. The polarity of the induced EMF we can find out with the help of another rule that is Fleming's right hand rule. Fleming's right hand rule also. Fleming's right hand rule also. We can find the polarity of the induced EMF. Fleming's right hand rule also. We can find the polarity of the induced. EMF in Fleming's right hand rule. What you have to do is the first three fingers in a right hand. The first three fingers in a right hand. We have to stretch mutually perpendicular to each other. The four finger gives the see here. This will be the four finger. The four finger gives the direction of magnetic field. Four finger. Four finger. Direction of magnetic field. Four finger gives the direction of magnetic field. Thumb. Thumb gives the motion of the conductor. Thumb gives the motion of conductor. Thumb gives the motion of conductor. And central finger. Central finger gives the direction of induced current. Central finger gives the direction of induced current. Keep in mind the first three fingers in a right hand. Yes, the first three fingers in a right hand stretch mutually perpendicular to each other. The four finger gives the direction of magnetic field. Thumb gives the motion of the conductor, and central finger gives the direction of induced current. Using Fleming's right hand rule also, we can find the direction of the induced current. But in this one, there will be we are going to use three fingers. There will be little bit confusion. How we have to find the direction of the induced EMF? And better one, we can use the lens law. But clearly, we have to say the polarity of the induced EMF, and we have to find the direction of the induced EMF means we are going to use the lens law. In lens law, there is no confusion at all. That's why better instead of Fleming's right hand rule, we should use a what? Lenz's law to find the polarity of the induced EMF. Thank you.